People don't know this, but I actually am a footballer. I used to play at a high level. Right? Tell the man himself, the John Richard. <laughs> you see? Am I dreaming? Am I like what? A magician or what? <laughs> a, 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 a fortune teller? <laughs> Val Gibson asked me to fly every player may have come out to Jamaica for one day of training. If I have the money, they bring them for Gibson. Right. All of you, if you follow the path, will have a life in football. That's not what professional footballers do. When professional footballers get day offs and breaks, they have fun. They are human beings. They're not machines, you know. Imagine right. if you hold it again. <laughs> if ten people or more like and subscribe and tell somebody to come, how many people will have? By the time time down time. Time. Yeah. You wanna do just, just support the man them thing. That's what I need for the <laughs>
You know, I was a little boy. I'm a single mother with five children. And um, first time I learned to drive was one of my coaches that taught me. Lunch money. One of my coaches that helped me with lunch money. Whenever I never have enough. I never used to like pressure on my mother. So sometimes I just tell her some bad money when I really don't have any. You know, boots, first job. If I broke, if I ever run aground, if I ever got in trouble. It was always my coaches. And so I understood that in order for a society to grow, some people had to take the responsibility beyond just being a parent of your own kids. And um, David Hunt, Wagga, Jimmy Sinclair, Mark Mendel, Bradley Stewart, you know, um, even um, Digalagi when I was in prep school. Those people were people that cared enough to make the sacrifice. So, one of the my greatest, um, I'm not a political person, but one of the people I respected the most as our, a leader of our country was Edward Seattle. And he always said it takes cash to care. You know? So, I never charge at Phoenix to come. And I always utilize the funds made from the transfer of a player to fund the next players. So everything that happened with Whisper, with all the boys going to Europe before, came off the transfers of Liam. And everything that happened in now with the boys come off the transfers of Whisper and Liam. Life is making it easier now because we're transferring more players. We just had 10 going to Europe. Yeah. And we'll talk about that soon. Yeah. We'll and so we're evolving. We're getting better. Notice our pitches are getting better. We're able to have our own gym equipment here. You know, um, the focus is not on... Sometimes you say you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish, you feed him for life. So all these things that were being done are being done with an end game. Don't believe I'm stupid. I'm not going to die for hungry either. But in order to get 20, in order to get six good players make it, you have to expose 100. Yeah. And that's, a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people, which is why they don't make the investment. Because it's not even sure. The six isn't even sure. It's only sure if you love it and you believe in them and they believe in you. Because when they believe in you, what you tell them to improve them, they will do. Because they believe in you. They know that you're not putting them down. They know that you're telling them for their own, own good. You know? Um, you know, as, as time passes, there's so much that you have to recognize in players. The, the things that come at them. We spot 17 now. National team. Everybody calling his name. Chelsea. This, that, this, that. It's not easy for, for him to just live and be humble the same way. But when I said to him, say, whisper, humble yourself. Make sure you sign every autograph of every kid that come to you because you were once one of them. Give away a jersey if you can to the people. I remember one of the greatest joys I had was the first game he played in Trinidad. And I think in Kingston. And the, I, I don't remember. Second rip. game. Yeah, second game. Yeah. I don't think they had taken him off. And he, he thought he was coming off. He came off on the opposite side. By the time he come back, he don't have no boots, he don't have no socks. Him don't have no, I don't see shorts alone in my van. Yeah? Because he gave everything away. And when you have a player that is like that, God will always bless him and you. So, that's why. All right, so, you know, that's Phoenix, and, and obviously Russ spoke about the why. Why is it that you provision the kids with the opportunity to experience that type of life? But enough of the why. Speak to us about the experience that you and your boys would have had this preseason, and speak to us about, well, preseason for the Manning Cup, but this summer, off-season for football in general. 
speak to us about the travels. Just tell us more about what happened this summer with Phoenix and Mona High School by extension. Well, this summer we began um, with a tour of Europe. Started out with Portugal and Spain. Um, went into England. Players went to England. Played games in Belgium against Genk, and Holland against Ajax, Austria, Germany. Um, played against the biggest teams in the world, really. Yeah. You know, I don't think any of these players, the players you see on the pitch, they've been to Madrid, they've been to Barcelona, they've been to Aston Villa, they've been to to Man City, they've been to Chelsea, they've been, they've seen and ex been exposed to what world football is and how academies work, what is expected, what is the behavior. Whisper went to Europe, to England, and came back a different person because he understood what it took for training. You can't be late, you know? And so the playing of the football is one thing, but the professionalism, which we lack as a nation, is the other. You know, the world is changing a lot and it's, it's scaring me almost ridiculous with this. And people go around and some people are proponents of the idea of fully dunce, for example. And, you know, how we dress, how we, we, we carry ourselves. And the idea of, okay, it's okay to, 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 to be unkept or to not dress appropriately or professionally. The world that we live in, yeah, to gain that competitive edge, you cannot carry anything with you that will make someone say, well, I don't like that about him. So, no. It's almost as if you have to be perfect. And when the boys go and they see how everyone operates, it's like that. But that's one thing. The next thing is the level of systems, the level of differences. You know, one team trade for two weeks just to prepare for us. Mm. Two weeks. They knew what was coming. They knew what was coming. Chelsea, they knew. Mm -hmm. Another team, Ajax, brought down five players from their first team. Five players to play against us. Because they're scared though. They're not taking a loose in the Phoenix. But one of the good things is, is that when we played against them at that level, and they were still able to see the boys perform, they were just like, wow. I mean, Klaus Van Huntelaar loved Theo. Yeah, yeah. He loved um, Puss, you know. The, 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 the players were phenomenal. Dante, Sheffield United. He has a place there once he's done. He has a place because they loved him from the first trip and the second trip he impressed even more, you know. So... You said something a while ago and it, it struck me a while ago. I have, to, I have to bring it up. I know we're past the why. But to get that six, you say you have to expose a hundred. What then do you say to the 94 that didn't make it? How, what, do, what do they do after football and what, how is their life? Yeah, but the difference with other people is they don't do all that it takes to get them there. So when you look at the stats, you say, okay, you might have 1,000 players or 10,000 players that want to become a professional footballer mm -hmm. and one may make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Whatever the stats are. That's true. Yep. But how many within that 10,000 train 11 months a year, practice the right things, eat right, dress right, speak right, do everything. Every step that you do increases your propensity to be in that percentile. Mm. Yeah? And so what Phoenix has done is we have beaten the curve because we're not supposed to get one more than one if we're lucky. We've gone two, three, four. We've gone 27 now. Pros. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest, you know, getting a Liam Bailey, I think probably the breakout season was around probably 2016, somewhere around there. And then getting a whisper in 2023. First of all, that's, 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 that's never been done in Jamaica, first of all. And to get that anywhere in the world, to find two superstars out of a country, we just don't see that. You know, and, and so I guess that speaks to, you know, you doing all that it takes to get them. And you would say that you're going to get one more very soon. You know, the stats say that won't happen, but we see you defy the odds already. 
Now I'm, I'm sure you're confident that one more would come. Um, not one more. Mexican is going to be a superstar. Mm. Denzel McKenzie can be a superstar. Yeah. Dante Peralta is already on his way. It is is going to be top. We have players already in Europe now. Mitchell, um, Zane, it, uh, Isco, Bob. Yeah, Saka. Understand? Dylan is now. Dylan came back from Europe playing for JC. Totally different player. Totally different player. He's not even thinking on that level anymore. You know, his movement is ten times more. You know, and that, that, that's the idea. So, the idea that you, the, to, in answer to the question that you asked, what do I tell them? Is some of you may go to the top. Some of you may go to a middle level club, and some of you may be a normal club. And that's fine. And that's fine mm -hmm. because wherever your level is, that's where you'll end up. But all of you, if you follow the path, will have a life in football, whether it is as a player, as a coach, as a manager, as a physio. Some some may even go into sports medicine. You know, and you know what I've found? It, the funniest thing that I've found is Dante Peralto. He took six subjects, past six subjects. If you look at the um um Damoy Whitfield, eleven subjects. All of them, the more disciplined they became in football, is the better the work got. And they never missed a day of training. So all of that idea of, of stopping, then, then, your boy did you know? Your boy boss, you know? <laughs> eh? Come say hi, no? Take off, uncle. Take right. off, uncle. Come say hi. So, so the, the perfect segue, the perfect segue. People, have a, have a visitor real quick. Just say a lot of people and whisper. Tell the man himself, the John Richard. <laughs> you see it? Jamaican <laughs> International. <laughs> People, if you don't want a whisper interview, make them know. Spam. You are going to whisper DMs and just spam it. This is that sports TV, right away. <laughs> All right, let's continue. That, that, that segue is perfectly to, to, to Europe and to, to the opportunities that, that you've given um, boys in Europe. You mentioned some names. You know, Damoy Whitfield, one of my favorite names. I think... The most underrated footballer from last season. One of the most underrated youth footballers in the whole country. Yeah. From what I've seen in isolation, the kid is ridiculous. And he deserves his name to be called up with the likes of the Romain Blakes and the Daniel Mitchell. And Especially the... now with the Jamaican national team not um, looking looking at midfielders and stuff. That's the man. That's the six. Yeah, so he's an outstanding player. Zane Pinnock is another one that he... And you mentioned a few. Kevin Wilson and, and so on and so forth. Talk to me about that mass exporting of players from Phoenix Academy. But first, give us a little, you know, how did the likes of uh, Reed or Williams or Wilson, sorry, you know, um, Bob, how did those guys end up under your tutelage coming from schools? Yeah, coming from schools, you know, all over Bob. the place. Yeah. You know, Bob was here before. Bob has been at Phoenix since he was six. Mm. Yeah, but my, we know <laughs> players like Marquis Reed and, and Mattis from KC yeah, and, and, and Saka. Uh, Kevin Wilson. Talk oh. to us about how well, those Saka was a kid that we, No, Saka was a, a Saka's father and I are friends. Right. Yeah? And for years, in fact, his, he and Chinsu used to do a, a clothing business and they used to supply. Um, us with clothes and so back then. I always said he was going to bring his son to us. The years went by and the, the player wanted to become a top row. And his father asked him to come. We brought him in and there was a lot of work to do. Because soccer, with me, I break you down and then rebuild you. Because I want no ego. Yeah? I want you to be able to trust me and listen. Yeah, so you break your right down. So when Saka came, he was a recruited player. Yeah, so he got recruited. Wolmers to 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 when him Mount Pleasant to JC always recruited. So when you recruit a player, you have to treat him like a special. So after a while, he thinks he's the cat's pajamas, and he will want to build a team around himself versus playing for the team. And so, 
crush him and break him right down and rebuild him. Now, team player. Top performing well. Um, Marcus' father, Reed, yeah. father, and I played football together. We knew each other for many years, Look, Richie. And um, people don't know this, but I actually am a footballer. I used to play at a high level. Right? And, um, same by the way, people. Same, same, same. Yeah. And while we're at it, same. <laughs> what, 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 what continents are we? No, they can score! People, we're going to just record interview right now. I'm going to tell this to them because every second he's going to do something on the pitch that we have to just take our attention. Yeah, people, that, 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 that break was, was, yeah. was whispered in something spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. But yeah, yeah. Read. But, um, yeah. Look at Richie. So he, he wanted to bring him. He came. Um, you know, that's one of the most dedicated little kids you can find. Don't talk a lot. Very unassuming. But his work rate... His dynamism, his Very creativity. But I want thing: if you come to Phoenix, you have to say Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. If you not say Phoenix, go back through the gate. Phoenix first, team first, systems first, and um, he did. He was very committed, you know, and. Um, I'm very happy to have him in, in in the club. I mean, you know, I'm the agent of the players. Don't get it wrong. I. I'm an agent, and that's what I do. Yeah. Um, everything else outside of that is run by Shelley and Dane and Nicola Bicknell and Casey is a, the majority shareholder of Phoenix All Star Football Academy. I'm not even a shareholder. I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. I am the owner of Phoenix Sports Management, which represents the players. Mm -hmm. So the lines get crossed a little because we're family and we, we all work together to make it work. You know, just like George Mendes would be a part of yeah. Benfica or one of them, yeah? Or I'd have a lot of contacts at Braga or whatever, Wolves. But he's not really the person there that is the owner. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it was just great to have the opportunity to open the doors to them for them and um, and to see. Yeah, and speak, now speak, to us about, level. speak to us about how that came into being. As as I mentioned, a mass exporting. You know, we saw players being signed left, right, and center, becoming full professionals at the age of 17, 18, and 19 years old. Speak at 17, about, you can't sign until 18. <laughs> at the ages of 18, 19, and then some of them would have been 20 years old. Only when you're special, you get a pre contract from not only one of the, the biggest clubs in the world. <laughs> we'll continue. So, speak to us about how that mass exporting of, of Phoenix Academy players and just players around Phoenix became, I think, this summer. Well, what happened was we, we were already playing in Europe mm -hmm. and they were hearing and seeing us. And so, um, the club, Phoenix, the academy was approached and um, the, the shareholders of the academy made the decision to buy into the club that was there and, and took control of the club. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the club, we didn't um, get rid of the coach that was at the club. We kept the coach and we, because we understand. The they, understand. Eh? they understand. They understand. Yeah. yeah, because I was just about to ask you. So, um, the, the fun when, that... when I say we, yeah. you need to understand this, right? That I am the agent. Yeah. So, I can yeah, say we. When, 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 when George Mendes would speak about Cristiano Ronaldo, mm -hmm. he would say we. Yeah. Yeah. But as, as it re regards to, 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 to Phoenix Academy um, acquiring shares in the club, um, do you mind you know, sharing some more details like the, the amount of shares that you guys would have bought in the club or some more is that okay for you to just give us more information on the type well, of business that was the done? academy owns um or would we have to bring on in case to speak to us about that yeah you probably would want to speak to shelly about that mm -hmm. but as far as my knowledge is the academy owns 50 percent of the shares all right and an academy product you know perfect segue let's talk about the kid for a second you know we, we need we have, we have a lot to catch up on um, Dujan Ispah Richard signed a pre-contractual agreement with Chelsea Football Club in right. March of 2023. That's some history right there. So I want you to talk to me a little bit about, you know, we know how it happened. We know he went on a trial to Newcastle. 
But then when Joe Shields made contact with you or you made contact with Joe Shields, you know, I invited him to Jamaica. He came here to make a presentation to whisper unto you. Now, what was that like and ultimately what helped you to make this decision on Chelsea? Ultimately, what helped you Joe, to make Joe Shields. A lot of people think that it had anything to do with Newcastle, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Good try, good try now. Joe Shields was at Manchester City mm -hmm. and I introduced him to Whisper two to two and a half years before. Yeah? He moved from Manchester City right after we spoke to, um, I think it's Southampton? Southampton. Mm -hmm. And then from Southampton, he went to um, Chelsea. Chelsea. So once he went into Chelsea and he was settled in, and he saw himself with the opportunity he wanted to bring this on board. So it was dually going on at the same time. Um, I'm the type of guy that I never, ever leave myself with one option. Because when you have one option, you're not in a negotiating position. Yeah. You're not in a position where if anything goes wrong with that decision, you, you can continue yeah so um he said oh, the defenders better now yeah yeah so um so the the idea is that joe was always a part he came um made a good offer for whispers future one of the important things was that he would be in the first team yeah so speculation ending right now whisper will be in chelsea's first team come january first Ooh. january you know, and that is uh, my my position. You know, the usual talk is whenever I say these things, people say Craig Butler is lying, Craig Butler is an idiot. You will see it under this video, yeah. I'm sure. It, it always comes and them say, right? that's the agreement. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the first thing. Yeah. Um, and that was a presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were there. Yeah, I wasn't there, but Joe Morris. You were there. And that's what I agree on? Yeah. Wasn't there also an element where you guys would, you know, collaborate to decide um, where would be a good landing option for him to, to go out on loan if, if necessary? No. They, they, we would if we decided for him to go. Okay. If he wasn't good enough to manage a first team. Yeah. If the coach didn't like him. But he gets a shot. But him get him shot. And that's, that's all he can ask for. Yeah. You can open the lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. You can open that door, but you can't push a man through it. Mm -hmm. And that's not my job. My job is to prepare him to be able to go through that door and kick it down. Yeah. My job is to set to him, whisper, make sure say you fix this problem on your social media or whatever because people are looking. My job is to make sure that I'm there as a mentor and as an advisor with the experience that I've had. So at, at, at 18 years old, do you think the Jean Richards is ready to go into a struggling chess right now and make a difference? Or do you think he'd be more suited to go to like a gank for a year? Or, you know, um, even at a higher level than gank and Ajax for a year and maybe make an impact there and then go back into the Premier League? You see, Whisper is a little like me in how he thinks. I don't think Chelsea is struggling. Yeah? I don't think they're in a, they're in a position of adjustment mm. yeah new coach new players well let me ask you a question i could have gone to jc or one of those other schools and jc could have won money up and perform how much of an impact would it have been if i went to jc and did what i did at Mona, what I'm doing at Mona. It wouldn't, uh, be, as, it wouldn't be as as monumental. So, if Whisper goes to Chelsea and then he goes, he started tearing top, <coughs> and Chelsea goes like this, then his name, you see, professional football is about choices, you know, choices, choices. Chippy having a difficult time at, at Man City sometimes, yeah? At Villa. At Villa, yeah, sometimes, right? The, the idea could be for Chippy to say, eh, I can give up a tire there. Nah, go to a Man, lower club. Go to a lower club and try something else. Instead, I had a tiger. 
heart of a lion. Never give up. Never die. You want to give me one minute? I'm going to score another one minute. You give me 10? I'm going to score and get an assist. And you're going to play me. Because I cannot be denied. And that is that is the philosophy of Phoenix. And, and it's, it's, it's something that we, we lack a lot in this world. Too many people get a challenge and they give up. Nine hour. Nine hour. You can't beat one of them. Hour. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the kids some more. You do acknowledge that there is another side to it, though. You know, that you, you enter in a transition in the environment, and it's just not the time, you know, for a young starlet, you know, to come and, and take over. Even though you might you might say it is a perfect opportunity to go and shine. You do acknowledge that there's another side to it. You know, enter in a struggling environment. No. With, with high competition, the likes of Jackson and Kuku, um, all players slightly older than he is, not even the top was No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. When Leon went to Genk, he shouldn't have been playing in his first year. Instead, Europe, a team of the season, best young player in Belgium. It's not. That is for people that don't think. Greatness is not. You can't put, for greatness to thrive, you have to put it in the, the most challenging environment. You understand? For greatness to thrive. Diamonds. Immense millions of pounds of pressure in a mountain. I like a piece of coal under pressure. That's how it becomes a diamond. You know? And at the same time, water, as smooth as it is, it actually carves rocks. Consistency. So, if you add the, the consistency to the pressure, greatness will rise. Yeah? If, you, if, you, if someone was to say, oh, Messi, you, you shouldn't go to Barcelona because Barcelona is really big competition for you. And rare, rare. No, 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 no. If you want to be the best in the world. His age, the likes of a young Fabregas and PK and, and all of those people. <laughs> and now their names pale in comparison to Messi. Exactly. But when you look at Whisper right now in that national team, does he look like somebody who doesn't belong there? Oh, no, he 100% belongs. And that's the perfect segue to Dijon Richards and International. How has that journey been um, just for you and for him and the people around him? I remember right back there, you had an interview with me, you remember? Yeah. And you said to me, Craig, Whisper's attitude, everybody's talking about Whisper's attitude. Um... Is he this? Is he that? And da, 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 da. Does he belong in the under 20? And we're arguing about it. And I remember whether it is that interview or after, everyone was saying, Craig Butler, shut up because he's just a little kid. He can leave big man ball game alone. Yeah? He's not good enough for the under 20. This is six months. Is six months gone already? No, since what? Under 20? Yeah. No, it's been a year? One year later. Yeah. One year. Where, where is he? Well, he got he got his call up. He got his call up nine months after the competition. Got the competition was last year summer. He got his call up in March. Okay, nine months later, first team. First game, perform. Second game, perform. World Cup, score on him debut. Yeah, official debut. Yeah, second youngest player ever in history to score in the World Cup. Start. He and Leon for Jamaica. Is, this is a storybook. Am I dreaming? Am I like what? A magician or what? <laughs> a, 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 a fortune teller? <laughs> Our. Because you said it. I said it. You said it. And I remember even on an interview on our channel, you say, yo, we need Whisper for one side and Leon for one side. And we were saying, hey, not yet, not yet. You know, and even though we love the kid, even we couldn't see what you saw. Are you a fortune teller? Tell us right now. No. Because I need to tell me some things about my future, you know. First of all, I can tell you what I, I want that. to see you do, but I can, because I believe in you guys. Yeah? I would like to see a program go more international. I'd like to see it more consistent, and I want to see it more about development, more than anything else, you know? But, um, and it will take you places, you know? I want to see you traveling and doing interviews of player, Jamaican players all over the world, you know? 
and Caribbean players. That's what I think you should do. And that's where you'll rise. But um, I can tell you, that little boy is out there, sir, Denzel, little Ted McKenzie, is that missing link, the man? The number 10 I'm looking for? See him right You're now. seeing it right now, because you told us a year ago. See him there? Number 10. Number 10, Denzel McKenzie. Ajax, I showed you what Ajax said about him, right? Mm -hmm. What them said? They love him, man, and they want him. Okay. As soon as he did it. I, they are asking for this player. They're asking for this player. And they didn't realize he was only 16. You showed, up, showed us conversations with, with, with Van der Sar. So, the reality, Huntelaar. Huntelaar, sorry. Yeah. So, the reality is. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> we spoke get frustrated. We are trying to look for some help. Yeah, so um so the the reality is is that that's the tr the, the the next step. Denzel McKenzie. We don't know if they are going to accept. I know the coach knows of him, sees him, he's trained with with their the assistant coach, John. And he likes him. And if you look at Theo, the Theo you saw six months ago, that's not the same Theo. He's massive. Mm -hmm. yeah. His legs yeah, are yeah, bigger, he's, he's stronger, bigger. mature, leader. He's, he's a, the, the, the passer that we need to connect to the, the wings. So. And, and that segues perfectly. First question, will we be seeing Dijon Richards playing youth? Football for Jamaica again. Is that a thing? Will he be a part of the next under 20 core that will try and qualify us for the Olympics and the under 20 World Cup? I don't think so. I really don't want to see him anywhere where Hyburn, Hal Grimson is not. It's not. I don't want any of the other coaches to go near him. Mm. I don't want to see Fosier and none of them. It is rumored that the under 20 coach will be John Wall. If John is there, then fine. Mm. Come a John. John has sense to. Mm. But, um, Outside of that, you see, something that you have to understand you now, there's a big psychological thing to do with footballers, especially developing ones. You know? So, you see, when you have a, a, a whisper, for example, do you think whispers confidence that he has on the pitch, especially with what you know he's gone through, right? You think his confidence. It's sweet me makes gonna deal with him. See? One whisper. Makes you have your ticket. <laughs> I'll push him down now. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Next can sweet to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so what I said is that confidence that you see him have, he has to get a lot of love and support and belief. You know? I say, hi, Mary Hal Grimson. Hi, Mary Hal Grimson. Carlos! Carlos! Make some change on the B side. Use use our reserves. Yeah, so, so the that love, he has charisma, the coach. Yeah. He has love, he has emotional intelligence, which 99% of these coaches don't have. I want you to describe as emotional intelligence. To know what makes a player tick. To give him the, the encouragement and motivation. Mm. To not break down a player. Yeah? To know how to build a player. To know how to say to somebody, listen, whisper, use your right foot, take good. Train him on the right foot. And then let him believe that it can work. Mm -hmm. I trained Maggie for six months. And Maggie is still a lean for him left. Yeah? On his right button. Mm -hmm. Still leaning to the left. Why? Because he doesn't believe. To get players to believe, you hear the Mona boys, they believe they're going to win. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. Because if you believe you can, and you believe you can't, guess what? You're right. Because yeah. what you believe that counts. And um, a lot of these coaches don't have that. They've not gone to the next level or seen high-level professional football to grasp what it takes, you know? 
How are you going to teach a boy what it is like to to go in um, to go into pro football and play pro football when you've never been there? When you've never seen how they operate? How are you going to tell a man, say, you need to be early and on time? You need to be in our locker room one hour before. Tell a Jamaican, you need to be in a locker room one hour before. And yet, they don't do that in Jamaica. Before training, one hour before training starts, you have to be in the locker for a reason. But if you have been to Genk, you have been to Ajax, you have been to all of these clubs, and you said to them, you need to be in the locker room one hour before, I might say, you might be able to say, you might, be, you might be able to say, and they'll believe you. You look at a kid and you see him hurting about something. I remember when I was a little youth in a brother. I was one of the proudest kids around. Okay, why I come up the mic? All the people in my Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was one of the proudest kids around. Poor now. Mom, God bless her. She was a real estate agent and she made money. But she come from a huge family. And you know, as that money they come in, everybody wants help and support. And she will always help everybody. So that leave, me as the LS one, I'm like a sibling. So. There are times I remember going to, to training and not eating the whole day. I'm filling up my belly with water. Yeah? And Mark would just come over. Mark Mendel would just come over. Greggy, you okay? I say, it's coach, all right. You're so, not okay. Come here. Let's go have a meal. I want to talk to you about something. He didn't have anything to talk about. He just wanted me to know that him love me. That him care. And if Mark did tell me to buck down that jeep there, and say, Craig, can not buck down that jeep? I'd try. Because I believe in him. And this is what it takes to be a real coach. And that's why I like Jaime. He's the first coach that walks up into the stands after the games. Talk to everybody. Tell them hello. He's not hype and silent and go on like him because he's now the coach. He's special. Tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. And it's up to you to decide whether you want to be mature enough to accept that criticism or you want to be a clown. You understand? What does he feel about Whisper? I love Whisper, man. Because I, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing people say that there are people that are upset about you know, Whisper getting so many chances. You know, you have professionals that have worked their whole lives for these chances and not getting them. How does the coach feel about Whisper? Why is he giving him so many chances? I'm signed to Chelsea, one. Yeah. Hey, I'm just asking the question. Wait, no, no, just think about it. He signed to Chelsea, one, as a 17 year old. Yeah. Two, he's probably the most prolific goal scorer in Manning Cup history. Yeah. Three, he's six foot four. Four, him shooting two feet. When you look at Whisper, you can see his quality. His quality. Quality. It's a great test for the. The Manning Cup squad. You know, what I would always say, how many of the players that you would put up with him and say should get the chances over him could make Chelsea's training, training session? Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's not, and he's, listen, they left a lot of players and took Whisper to camp. Think about that. They left players that they paid millions for and took Whisper to camp. Why? And in keeping with, with the Premier League, you know, a bit off of Whisper, Leon Bailey, our next Jamaican player playing straight in Europe. You're his handler and his dad for all intents and purposes. I hate that term, handler. <laughs> Why you hate the term? The man on a horse. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's for, 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 for lack of a better term then, you know, um... He's come under a lot of pressure in that yellow shirt. Obviously for Villa, you know, he scored four goals on the season. His second Premier League goal very recently coming off the bench. I don't think he's having much grief in Europe. But when he comes and plays for Jamaica, he's come under a lot of scrutiny. We recorded that video the other day. 
we're in the stands, we're, we're speaking to the people. And, you know, he was getting a beating. As you know, Jamaican fans are. You know, um, the likes of Damian Lowe, you know, a long-serving patron, a long-serving citizen of Jamaican football, somebody who's, who's a legend. Damian Lowe is, is a legend at, at this point. He's played over 50 games, he's a legend. Shamar Nichols, another person, well on his way to getting that type of status. And the Jamaican fans, you know, have been very hard on them. And especially Leon Bale. I don't necessarily think he's at legend status in the national team shirt yet, but definitely has the potential to get there. Speak to us about about the, the scrutiny that he's come under in recent times because of his performances or lack thereof in the national team colours. Let's speak about what you would consider lack of performance. I think Leon was a man of the match in the game the other day. You think so? Second game. Second game. I think he was also special in the first game. You have roles, yeah? And people may start out their lives in one role and become another. When Messi started out his, his role at um, Barcelona, Ronaldinho was a man. And he was the flashy, bright, new goal scorer. And Ronaldinho was supplying him with balls and leading the team and great then messi became the person the engineer the master behind the organization leadership and structure while and, also still scoring the most goals i might add sure and um for me there are two factors and i've said it over and over again our national team has not prepared itself to compete and this is what i mean you brought Jaime hal affable charismatic intelligent great coach but he has done a great job recruiting and i know what he does he actually goes to england and go to leon bailey house and sit down with him and talk to him Go to them. He's done his work. Remind me a lot of what I would be if I was a coach. That's why I like. The players coach. Yeah. He did his job. Clearly. He brought them. They want to play for him. They're, however, coming from different systems that they play 11 months out of the year. We get them for a total of maybe four weeks total for the FIFA. Yeah. Um, dates, right? Why is it that everyone else national team performs well when they come together and look synergistic, but ours don't? It's a very simple reason. Why is it that Leon Bailey and Dujan Richards, when they play together, look like they grew up together? The synergy is there. Whisper run, chippy find him. Chippy run, whisper find him. Why? You know why? They're coming out of the same system of development. The runs that Whisper made, Chippy was taught the same runs. So in his mind, when he's a supplier, he's looking for that run. What has happened with our country is that when FIFA gets the money and sends to Jamaica for development, yeah? Unlike most people don't know what I know because I'm exposed. There's something like it's when you you you, you open somebody's eyes, it's very difficult to close it back in. So when a man go and get the money for the development, and the development is to say, listen, we want you to have training camps and developmental camps throughout the country for the national team. Yeah? This is the money you get it for. And they don't use it for that purpose. And they use it for other purposes. All the other national teams are teaching from 12, 13 years old up systems that they want their players to leave when they're 18, 19, 20 and go and play professional clubs and be able to come back to and remember. So if my chance leaves Phoenix at 18 and Sean leaves at two years from now, 
and Whisper leaves tomorrow. And the guys who are in Belgium leave. When we call them back to Phoenix, I don't have to run a training session to remind them how we're playing. They already know. The problem is, we are now recruiting them or I agree from Everton gone, we've been gone now. So we're recruiting Leon Bailey, we're recruiting Whisper, we're recruiting Damon are playing uh, the Phoenix the Union. Union, Philadelphia. We're recruiting Pinock from over another side. Yeah. All coming from different systems, but with no base system to start from. Yeah, okay, but we understand why the team, you know, isn't the final article yet. But a lot of people, and I am talking about Liam Bailey's individual performances. There's some no, no, of that, no. that individual brilliance that we expect Let from him. I think there's more to see. Let me ask you a question. If I am now a supplier, right? I'm now a supplier. What a score. Who's three? That's why I said the man about money come for play. Nobody kill him. Don't promise me though, you don't hurt Mexican. That's all. <laughs> yeah, so so the idea. Chuba, you play it? Yeah, so the um Leon. Yeah? Leon was normally a winner, right? Let's look at the games going back, right? When Leon started playing as a winger under Paul Hall, he did okay. Yeah? Before that, though, how many times Leon touched the ball for a game? They don't give him the ball. Why they don't give him the ball? They don't understand his runs. Aston Villa played 10 months out of the year. He make a run, then we see him. They yeah. go down the line and cross. Hook it back and Chip is there waiting because he knows that's where he's supposed to be. Yeah? And that's part of what we do. Yeah? And I want to see this type of thing continue in the national team. So you said the reason we aren't seeing Leon Bailey's individual brilliance, as I put it, is because the system around him isn't there yet and that is because the players are coming from this end this it's, it's developing do you realize that yeah, but, but let me ask you a question in this last of, game we played the likes of Demarcus come, come in right in and show you're seeing individual yeah and individual that's, what player. Of, that's what they're asking for from them no but that's not what no that's not what the coach is asking for mm, and that's the most important thing the coach is asking for him to be the playmaker mm -hmm. that's what he's doing he's asking for him to be the leader that's what he's doing He's asking for him to take the dirty jobs. That's what he's doing. Whisper start up front. He's having a little struggle. Say, so, okay, Whisper, go on up on the wing where you like, like play. I mean, go up there and work it for a little bit. Yeah? Midfielder's not making the passes. He go back in on the midfield drop and ping it over the left right side to Whisper. Whisper, if I catch it, because I never expect it. Yeah? Connecting, making the passes to the players, talking to them, leading them. It's a totally different thing. Yeah? Totally different thing. And so, what Whisper try to get for? Yeah, so, um, this is the, the whole idea. Yeah? It's a different role. If it was just about getting the ball and taking on people and dribbling, Chippy couldn't do that a hundred times over. But now he has to be looking. Now he has to be tracking back. And he's doing that to me. I said it to him. I said, I'm so proud of you. Do you think that's the right role for him in this team? Or do you think we need him more as the end product guy because me personally I obviously think... I'm not a professional coach but I'm saying if if we spend the Margaret can score a goal for us every single game not many teams in Concord are going to score three on us I can tell you this if we can get and this is where the problem is if we can get the mid the, the six or the eight midfielders mm -hmm. to give a constant supply of balls to Leon instead of turning back the ball. Yeah? I can show you my phone. Every message I sent to um, our midfielder, short one, Lati Bodier. Every message I sent to him, you know, send the true pass, send the true pass, send the true pass. Don't turn back the ball. <laughs> Off the field, yeah. tell him send the ball. Off the true field. Don't turn back the ball. They send him the message I'm every day, you know, brother. Don't turn back the ball. Yeah. Start to believe. Yeah. But say you have a dog, right? 
I beat the dog every day. So I must go through the gate. Yeah. After a while, even if you leave the gate open, you may be afraid to go through the gate because I'm afraid to get beat. Mm -hmm. So that's what Jamaica has become. Yeah. Yeah. They're afraid to take risks, afraid to take chances. And if you don't do that, a player like Leon Bailey's creativity is of no use to you. Because yeah. you won't give him enough balls for him to lose 10, create 10, yeah. and score 3. Mm -hmm. You're giving him 5. You're turning it back to your back line, back to your back line, back to your line. Back. Inviting risk. Yeah? While you need to be brave enough to turn and say, listen, Chippy, take it to them. We win it back. All right. What do you think about the expectations, though? Because maybe that is where the problem is. A lot of people, they're expecting him to be playing in the same role that he is overseas and to be, to be uh, the, the man uh, of this team. Not, not even the man, but they're expecting of Leon Bailey what we've seen from the Mariah Gray. Yeah. Is that the problem where they don't necessarily understand? The Mariah Gray, Gray does not have the responsibility that Leon has. Yeah. yeah. I think Leon is carrying the team on him two shoulders. Mm. You see, that is where people have problems now. That we, but when I say carrying the team on his two shoulders, you think I mean that he's scoring the goals no, or, is he, or is he saying, I feel responsible for Whisper. Mm. I feel responsible for Lati Body or getting the ball going forward. Mm. I have to talk to him and make sure he get it right. I have to get this team together. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say he's carrying the team. My Denzel, yeah. he has to carry my team. Mm -hmm. Yeah? We depend on him. Yeah. Chip, Denzel can play on the left wing and dribble down all left wing yeah. and, and take on him. If I'm playing in the middle, I'm going to send a true pass. Make sure it's the team, all right. All make right. sure the team, all right. You might have Licker Sean in there. Yeah. Or just coming up. My, my chance are coming in. My chance touch a pitch, but I have to give him a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's the type of leader that Leon is becoming. Mm -hmm. And I told you this about two years ago. I said, by the time 2026 come around, we will have Leon. Yeah? You said it. And you will see Whisper, you will see Denzel, you will yeah. see all of those players coming up, all the young players coming up. And he will lead them yeah. to the World Cup. Craig, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't ask this question. A lot of people are questioning the commitment of one Leon Bailey. You know, he was spotted, you know, partying on international break. What do you make of that? And how do you respond to the people? Because I, I would assume that that's not a good look for a professional. Stop chat. Mm. That, that's what you say? Yeah. Mm. Explain. How do I, how do I say it without making sounding rude? Sound rude. Sound how sound dare you? Yeah. How dare? Who the hell are you? This player does not see his family or friends for months at a time. This player does not get to see us for Christmas. He does not get to party. He trains and works hard every single day. Yeah? Leon got, they got a break, right? On Saturday. Yeah? So they got Saturday off. They were to go back in on Sunday. So if you want to go to your friend them on Saturday night, please do. And I have no problem with it. You know? They say all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. You leave international break and go back to Aston Villa and score, don't? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, and, and, and this is the question that I'm asking. He did not break. Right he did not way. break mm -hmm. any curfews. Right. He was given the night off. Mm -hmm. What do you do on your night off? Well, I can't disclose that right here. <laughs> what? I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. If I have a night off and have a break, I might go to my wife, I might go movies, I might go have a drink with my friend them. I might catch up with people that I don't see, especially if I'm overseas. And I don't see them for another four months. I go hang out with them and play some domino and ludo and have some fun. And then make sure that you're back in your bed at 10, 10 p.m.? No. You're yeah, a professional footballer, come on now. Oh, that's, so, what, that's what people expect. Hold on, hold on. That's not what professional footballers do. When professional footballers get day offs and breaks, they have fun. They are human beings. They're not machine for you. When I say oh no, I mean those who come out and say, oh, hey, hey. they're not machines. They have feelings. 
They're human. Leon Bailey is a human being. You know how much you know you know depressing professional football can be? I've heard the story. You know what it is like to not see a family? I know a guy. I, I know a guy named um, Brian Roy, good friend of mine. Played for Ajax, Nottingham Forest. And Brian, he said when he was finished football, so we were talking years ago. He said, don't make this happen to, to Chippy or any of your players. He said, when I was finished football, I did not fit in because mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was like. Mm. That's like a man I got prison and come out and the world oh, yeah. changed. A, a, lot of, a lot of players, you know, speak about how coming out at 35 years old, you're still very, very young by social standards. But you're old, you don't know nothing. Yeah. The world around you that is revolving around you don't know. As a professional footballer, you can't go without people bothering you for an autograph mm. if you're good. Pressure in you every day. So you can't hide and go away. You can't do nothing. So. When they get a chance to come home, let me go to a party, man. You know, I'll go to them. I will go to them. And we say, you know, I remember uh, you guys and anybody who's a parent out there must read this poem. And you guys might have children soon. I don't know. Very soon. But read this poem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Khalil Gibran. And it says, on children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically says, don't try to make your children like you. You may try to make them make your, to be like them. For they belong in the world of tomorrow, where you can only dream to go. Every every interview you leave us with one. Every single interview. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you can only dream to go. Say see me? Yeah. Watch me. You know some look cool. <laughs> Watch all my shoes and all of them things. I want to be like them. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. What's in my beads and empty? Yeah, dreamer. Of course. Yeah, in the dreamer I'm seeing. Of course. Yeah. You understand? So, I try to be like them. Yeah. I remember when I was a little kid, my father, when I went to New York. Yeah? He did, he did a good thing for me. He got me my green card and got me to go to college. And he was a, 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 a power broker. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And he wore a suit every day. The first thing the man tried is put me in a suit. Mm. And I hated him for it. Because I wasn't ready for a suit at 18, 19 years old. I wanted to live my life and have fun. Yeah? Years later, I wore a suit for almost 20 years in my corporate position. Yeah. Right? But the fact that he tried to force it so early, even though he meant well, I didn't grasp it. You know? And that's why it's important. Watch it, watch it. <laughs> Who's one go up front? Yeah, so it's important that we recognize that Leon, like anyone else, has a life. He wants to have fun. He wants to spend time with his friends. And so my friend them are some little jing back to you. Know. So my friend them and I approve, I know. Yeah? Yeah. But there is friends. Yeah. I'm sure you have friends. Your parents don't approve of mm, Not so sure, but I, I, get, yeah, I get it. I am <laughs> sure, listen, Chippy have friends from all different walks of life. And he can't turn around and cut out him friends that he grew up with just because he's operating at a different level. That love him. Yeah, and they love him. Yeah? So when he come, he's going to spend a little time with them. Buy them a drink, take them out. You understand? Craig, this is your, this is your moment to answer. All of these questions, you know, and I'm going to pose them to you because it's my job. We see the 17 year old whisper driving a nice car. A lot of yes. people say, yeah, yeah, You gave him that car, right? Yes. All right, yeah. They're saying you put a 17 year old around the wheel. Answer that question. Answer, um, say something to that statement. My daughter at 12 was driving a Mercedes. So you, can, you shouldn't be saying that to the camera. Remember, say it's illegal. No, so no, no, we want to no, be no, careful no, no. with yes, that. <laughs> I taught yeah. every single Phoenix player that is here, sir. Yeah. All of them can drive. All of them can cook. All of them can clean. All of them can iron their own clothes. All of, all of them can sew. Right? These are life skills. Whisper got his learner's license. And when he got his learner's license, mm -hmm. 
he was able to drive with people beside him with a license. Yeah? yeah? And so he started to practice. He got his car and he can drive the car practicing. Right? Tell him doing things. And, and not even about the but but some would say and uh, not me I I disagree fervently. But some would say um he hasn't officially yet made a cent besides I'm assuming the per diems that you'd have gotten from representing the national team made a cent from football yet. Um to be driving a probably a 15, 20 million dollar car. Do you think that's putting bad mind of kill them and envious <laughs> it like a mad them? Right? Yeah. If the youth work, yeah, work and he deserve it, yeah. he works hard every day. He's here training right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Every day. Two, three times a day. He's disciplined. Him train. Him have him look at one girlfriend. Yeah? yeah. I'm still with him look at one girlfriend. Sarah they sit down over there, so I watch him. Yeah. Quiet like a mouse. Right? Yes, I approve of her. Yes, I approve of her. <laughs> And I make sure that she behave herself on it. <laughs> right? But that's what you do as a mentor. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You don't turn around and say, okay, well, because I remember um, you don't turn around and you say, okay, well, because you, could you say that to Messi at 17? He's, he shouldn't be driving a nice car at 17. Messi was already at Barcelona. Whisper is at Chelsea. Yeah. What he must do? Tech bus? Why must he take taxi? What should he do? Drive a little Corolla. When you... Let me tell you something. Treat a man as he could become. Yeah? Treat a man as he is, and he shall remain that way. Treat him as he could become, and he will aspire towards him. Yeah? When Leon was his age, Leon also had a Mercedes. In gang, well said. Same age. And Kyle. Yeah? And, and Kyle. Kyle. Yeah? So, it's not about, it's the model. You earn it, yep. you deserve it, you get it. Me now, I'm to turn around and look at my player, them and see that boy, them have the potential for X, Y, and Z. You get signed X, Y, and Z. You, must, you ever hear them say? You must spoil the owner, Pitney, and don't make nobody spoil them for you. Oh, yeah. You understand? Me will spoil my players. Eh? At the end of the day, me can talk to my players. Eh? Me can say, make sure, say, somebody beside him. Where you. Leave, where you leaving now? Where you going? I'm going over there, sir. What time you coming back home? This time, okay. You eat your dinner. You eat this, so and so and so. Remember, Sir Chelsea said diet for the X. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this serves as motivation to the other. You know, kids here that see a 17 year old who was training with them just a year ago. They're driving a nice car, still training with them. Of course, Mikey Jr. Mikey Jr. has been driving a long time now. Yeah. Yeah. I just get him licensed one day. Yeah. I, I'm sure if you look at my thing, you see me teaching them up and down my road. But which father or parent doesn't actually take the time to teach his kid the truth? The truth. Do we all wait until they're 17 to teach them to drive? Is no. that what parents do? No. Is that what your parents did? I got taught how to drive late, but I, that's definitely not. Is that what your parents did? Circumstance. Yeah, yeah, I, was, I, was, I was being taught to drive from as early as I could have been taught to drive. Exactly. Yeah. My little daughter learned to drive when she had not three stairs. I can't tell her that. Three year old, she on the stairs. No, I wasn't, I wasn't driving that toy. My case is a special you. <laughs> And, and, I, and I would take the same matter with my kids. I'm sure as they are able to drive. Dante, they will be driving. Dante can drive. You know, one of the things that you're, you're scared of, I am scared of, <laughs> is that Whisper goes to Europe and somebody drop a Mercedes for him and in debt. <sighs> yeah. You're not used to it. My daughter, a guy come and pick her up in a Mercedes. She's. <sighs> My daughter go to the and say, yo, my father, one of them left me from me, a 15-year-old. Oh, you, man? You understand? You have to go treat me. That now go do it. You have to yeah. come with love. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You have to come with decency. Yeah? Makes sense. And this is what a lot of parents would do. Any parent who wouldn't do that for their child is selfish and wicked. Yeah. And anybody who try to blight that or make noise about it is also cruel. There are some people that come, a, a man come on their thing. 
I'm talking about whisper illiterate. You hear about that part eh? No, I never, I never heard about that. There's a man who come on and go up on some blog. Whisper is a very, very wise young man, yeah? He ain't stupid. Yeah. Very sharp young man. And very confident young man. Yeah? And always remember this. I say it to people all the time. Yeah, but I always say it to people all the time. Leon, when he was younger, didn't like school. Yeah? And today, Leon speaks four or five different languages. Yeah? Fluently. Um, and the fact is, is that over the years, I learned one thing. There was a, there was a saying. They say, fish are the best swimmers. Monkeys are the best climbers. But if you, read, if you grade a fish and how well he climbs, he'll be a failure. Yep. So some people, and if I ever say anybody that needs to do his academics to support his career of football, that is Bijan Richards. He's designed for this game. And his academics... Oh, yeah. Sure. His academics should always be geared towards preparing him for life as a professional. English, languages, French, German, Dutch, business, yeah. Yeah? yeah, corporate governance. Those type of courses is what he needs. Public speaking, image projection. Yeah, people are talking about whisper. You ever hear me cut potato yet? Is that time for everything under the sun? Yeah? yeah? And if Whisper wants to speak the Queen's English, he can. Believe me. Yeah? yeah. Leon? You have you seen Leon do an English interview? With the, with the pundits? Yeah. You hear Pato? Okay. Let him do an interview with a Jamaican. Do you want it me the other day? Yeah. And is it Pato? Yes. Everybody yeah. did that. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Ecclesiastes, there's a time for and place for everything under the sun. So why I come on a, a bad mind whisper now because I whisper do I look at interview? I did the interview him talk patwa. Have you listened to what he says? Is patwa not our native tongue? Is it not recognized as an international language? Do you know that it is? It's not a dialect. It's our language. Yeah? Now because someone speaks patwa, does it mean that they're not sensible, not educated, illiterate? No. I can tell you something. Whisper, Chippy is one of the most mature, intense, planned individuals I know. And Whisper, right behind him. Can I read? Top. But a lot of them, when they just start, when the boys just starting out, I'm sure you ever heard one of Wiz Chippy's interviews when he's about 12 or 13? Eh? He evolved. Yeah. And that's what the process is. It's about trusting the process and growing. Yeah? And that's what Leon, Whisper, all the Phoenix, that's what we're all here about. You know? And before, before we even um, start to wrap it up, I wanted to because as I said, Leon Bailey has come under a lot of scrutiny recently. People are begging Hal Grimson to give, to give Leon the job. Obviously, our sentiments aren't shared. We also want to see Leon Bailey score goals and get us so a Let me ask a question. Up. What do you think of the game Leon played? All right, so in what my did opinion, you see? I, I think Leon Bailey was, you know, I, I don't think he was the man of the match, as you said. But I think Leon Bailey... I, I saw where he, he dropped off, you know, he took up the ball, he made runs, but his touch could have been cleaner, and I think he could have, you know, been more direct, you know, there were a lot of times when I saw Leon Bailey in the box, with his body opened up, and still putting it on his right foot, I yeah. saw him do that twice, and it, with his body it, open up, and yeah, putting yeah. it on his right yeah, foot, yeah, instead of just cracking it, a couple and of he's times, he's putting it on his right foot, yeah, you know, the drag that he does, from left to right, why is he dragging and putting on his right foot? That's the question that I'd like to ask Leon Bailey. I can answer you. Answer me. Because I expected him to kick with his life. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm mixing it up. Yeah? Yeah. You know, people don't intend to mess up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah? I'd like to believe so. Yeah? <laughs> no, for sure, for sure, for sure. So when a man don't... <laughs> When a, when a man <coughs> try to dribble and try to create and may not get the shot off, would you prefer that? Or do you want somebody that get the ball because him have no gonads, turn back the ball every time? And that's a side, side back, side, side back, no, side, no, I, side back. I want, no, I, I want Leon Bill to go. You know, all to right. go and lose it. I'm all about well, he that. Can't go and lose it. To kick more. He take can't more go and lose it. He can't go and in the position that he is. His retention of the ball is more important than when he's on the way. You understand that? The percentile of passes for an attacking midfielder, which is what he, in essence, is playing. Because he might play behind the three points of attack. Yeah? And he has to make the connections. So his passes, the man who passed the ball, you know, is not the man who normally you see. You know, he's the man who's taking the shot. Is the man who dribbling down the line and taking on somebody? Yeah? How many people saw when he, Leon is making a run and two people following him this way so that it opened up the space for Demarai for dribble? How many people see when he, he met the pass to Demarai and Demarai make it into Bobby Reed and Bobby Reed alone and him call offside? How many see, see the synergy that is now being created in that national team? That was not happening six months ago. A beer, long ball, boom, boom, boom. The man, I'm take the ball now. And it's coming. And they're coming from different houses. Yeah, it's a Tower of Babel in reverse. Yeah? You know the Tower of Babel where everybody speaks different languages? It's in reverse. They're coming, speaking different football languages and coming together. Yeah? And that's what Hal Grimson is forced to try to do. That should not be. And that's why we're set behind. So it's taking longer for us. Yeah? But the good thing is, why you think John Wall is starting to deal with the younger players? To get to see that point. To get the younger players to understand what Hal Grimson wants. Mm-hmm. And then flow them into the senior team. Yeah. Uh, but what, what would you tell the fans, you know, that are getting impatient with Leon? What would you tell them? You know? I'll tell them what I said today. <laughs> the Aston Villa fans. <laughs> I've learned one thing in life. Never, ever count out Leon Bailey. Never. If you do that, it's the biggest mistake I have. When you think he's done, him score. When you think he's tired, I heard somebody talking about Chippy's body the other day, came up on him shirt. Chippy's body has always been like that from as a kid. Yeah? He's not one of those kids with rip muscles and whatever. That's not him. He's, he's so dexterous. Yeah? And pliable. And so body stay. You understand? So I am very happy with how Leon is. And I would say everybody, continue to believe in him. Continue to believe in Jamaica. Continue to believe in the system and understand he's taking a role that he doesn't normally play. <laughs> Where's my side, Ned? Where's my side, Ned? <laughs> it's going on, people. We will cl- we'll close it off, Craig. But one thing I have to ask you right now. I know that you have a. Well, then take off his shirt to that. That shirt. That shirt a big, that a big game are going out there. <laughs> they won't beat him so bad. But <laughs> I have to ask this question right now. What's your pussy? I yeah. want to know what's the relationship like right now with you and you know RJFF. What's it like? You know, getting better. No, because our relationship with the JFF is getting better. Yeah. yeah, that's the game plan that they have. The game plan is to get all you bloggers. Don't think if 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 something happens, you know. Just listen, man, sir. Yeah. You of all the people have been shown yeah. what they have done. I show you things I won't show the public, and I did it so that you would understand mm-hmm. why I take the stance. Yeah. yeah, the relationship you know, when you're disappointed, 
when um, Chung went in there, I thought he would start to be somebody we could work with. Not so. Disappointment. Yeah? Um, Care to go into it or just leave it on the No, place? just leave it where it is because All right, so since I think that um, that Hal Grimson for Hal Grimson if Hal Grimson asked me to fly every player may have come to Jamaica for one day of training if may have the money they bring them for Hal Grimson Alright, since they're not going to delve into it what about the quote-unquote not fighting fire with fire situation there is an altercation in an ordeal in the JFF head office the other day where obviously you're recording about inability to get access and you having to to to, to you know purchase um, more tickets than any All right. parent should, right? Let me yeah, show you I'm not a parent. Get this straight. Yeah. I am the manager of three players in your in your national team, two of which are in the top five percentile of your team. Yeah? So who's the third? Romario. Oh, Romario. Yeah? All from our academy. Yeah. And you, who are bloggers. Part of the media. Give us some respect, man. Come on. Hold on, brother. Remember, I'm telling you where I want to go. Yeah? yeah? Come on, believe in you. But you're bloggers. I have 20 years invested in developing Jamaica's football. 20 years of sweat, hard work, doing it without them, doing it without no support, whether they like it or not. And I've given them to the national team. And I could have said no. You know I could have said, okay, whisper, go on to Qatar. And I could have said, whisper, Leon, hold out, stay one more year in Germany and get German citizenship and play for Germany. I said, no, Jamaica first. Yeah? And they do not want to give me accreditation. Why? Yeah, but the point, the point that me and Rush were discussing was, don't you think if maybe you had a more tempered approach, it'd be more likely for you to be accredited? Listen, listen, listen. Understand this. It is the game, man. It's no, no, game. no, it's not the game. If you, if you call a man the worst things under the sun, it's not going to help you. I was always accredited before. Mm. While you were being worse than you are right I was always accredited before. Mm. So all the times that we've seen If you try to sell out one of our players to Qatar, I am going to call you on it. Mm -hmm. And when that player now plays for Jamaica, I am going to make sure yeah, that he knows and you know that it's Jamaica we're playing for. And if you turn around because you know, so you never get to sell him out. Yeah? And you know, block my accreditation. No, you, you know, you're picking the wrong person to ramp with. Because I'm not a problem of buying my ticket there. Because I always do. Because if you give me 10 tickets, I buy 30 because the whole of them you tell me. You know that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone to Jamaica match and don't say all of Phoenix walking in them kit? Yeah, 20, 30 players in their kit, plus Casey, plus all the management team. Because if one Phoenix up on the field, everybody gave me them. So what is the request from the JPS that they didn't um, give you? All we asked for is... 30 tickets? No, no. I said, can we get some tickets? Some tickets. Yeah, and, and, and accreditation. An accreditation for you. Yeah. That's reasonable. I mean reasonable. I say a, a horse, a little picnic. I get accreditation. Little children... Just starting out. Yeah. Why? Because they want you, the bloggers, to ease them up. Mm. And be nice to them. So they start giving little fruits. Mm. You understand? So you now will turn around and be nice to them in your conversations. And allow them to continue to do what they, are, they want to do. People are very strategic in what they're doing. Yeah? yeah? yeah. So one of the things that you must make sure you never do is regardless of whatever sweets they issue to you, never lose sight of your integrity you understand and that's the difference to me my integrity cannot be compromised 
No money can't buy me. No time. I never do this for the money to begin with. You understand? I do it for the love of my country and for the love of the youth them and to pay back my coach them for what they did for me. Simple enough. So somebody like that, you can't really win against them. Yeah. You know? Because you can't buy them. Yeah, if you fight them, they're not going to back down. Right? And if you try to embarrass them, it's not going to work either. Because when you try to embarrass me, I got video record and show the world. So it was never about me wanting tickets. If you call any of them, you tell, ask them. Mikey Jr., come here. Yeah? Come on here. I have a question for you. Chip ever play a match yet? And me go and don't buy tickets? Yeah? But how much tickets at that time? Only for everybody who did it. Okay. So, if I go to JFF, and me ask them for ticket. If them give me one ticket, how much ticket me buy? Everybody else. Alright. Thanks. You understand? I can ask everyone anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't miss a match for Jamaica. Cause that's how I know that's how you have them be loyalty to the country. They must sit there in the stands, want to be the guy on the pitch, and support the guy that's on the pitch. Yeah. That's it. Yes, people. The sun is setting on us, so we have to wrap it up. Good conversation. Must say enjoy this one, Craig. Are you left out with a couple gems as you always do? You know, and I respect it, man. People, I hope we covered all the bases. Um, you know where to reach us. This hey, guess who? Hold on, hold on. Guess who? Vise yeah. is playing. I was hoping that it would have come. I was praying that this opportunity would come soon. I didn't realize how soon. Vise, the club that Phoenix is part owner of, yeah. um, is now playing against KRC Gang in the FA Cup oh, yeah. in Belgium. Oh. On October 31st. Interesting. FA Cup. So we... Because, you know, there, to there, be no. the place, if, if I'm, if I'm being honest, now. I never asked enough about that, that partnership in a rush kind of hurried it along. During that time, there was so much more I wanted to say about that. And I wanted to talk about, you know, how are this players being compensated? Like, course. you know, like you get me. I wanted to speak about the individuals, how they received, you know, the type of the fandom. club loves them, the fans love them. In fact, they brought that vibe. People bringing in Jamaican flags oh, into yeah? the to the stadium. It was a team that nobody used to watch the games. All the kids start to come out. The players are um, going to the training sessions with the younger players, with the with the, with the, with the younger kids. And the kids loving them now, so they're coming out to support. So is it is, it is it a program where, you know, you expect to carry in the third division for as long as life is? Or do you guys no, no, see no. the they second division? win the, the third division. This year? Yeah, man. Go to the second division, win the second division, then play consistently with the best teams in Belgium. Give us a timeline. We can see them in, be in the two years. Division. Or is that in the, the year of No, the Pro League. Yeah. Pro. We can see them in the Pro League in five years. Two years. Mr. Butler, you always... <laughs> to believe. <laughs> to believe. <laughs> well, I guess you're you you manifesting. What a sense. Do something if you don't intend to. Believe it, man. Hey, believe it. Believe Mona. It. Yeah. Two years ago. Oh, Mona will be going to the, the final and winning this year. Mm -hmm. Now, it don't seem that... Far off. No, it, 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 in fact, anything shorter than a wit than a trophy is yeah. a failure. It's a failure. Yeah. In two years. Two years. Look on the wall behind you. Look on the wall. Look on the wall. All the way up. <laughs> All of them. But yeah, man, we have to go wrap it up because the daylight really not allowed to talk to Mr. Butler as long as we don't talk to Craig until tomorrow. Because there's just so much to talk about. The repetitive part again. Huh? The repetitive uh, part. Deep, if, you, if you like the video, don't forget to like the video. Leave a comment and subscribe to Inside That Sports TV. And the one we're thinking for us now. Can you imagine? Right. If you. Hold on again.
<laughs> if it's 10 people or more, like and subscribe and tell somebody to come. How many people will have? <laughs> By the end of the day. You wanna do just, just support them on them thing. That's all I need for them. All the people that support me, support them. Cause I'm good you them. Them there from the beginning. That's right. if you do get real. All right, bro. Thank you so much. And by the way, here's my Chelsea shirt. We spoke up for me. Do me, do me, do me. You see? You must sign. I sign in there. Love. Not this good. Everything.